Hey everyone, it's Rice here, and today I'm going to show you how to animate and implement your own custom icons in a Fallout 4. Now, these icons can be used for anything from quests and perks and anything UI related, honestly. I should say I'm no UI expert, I can't make custom interfaces, but I do know the technical aspects of the animated icons, and I know how to implement them into vanilla systems in-game, like the quests and the perks and stuff. Now in this tutorial, I'll be showing you three different methods for animating your own icons, and then I'll show you how to implement them in-game. But for the bare bones setup, the only programs you'll be needing are Adobe Animate, or Flash in previous versions, uh, a program called JPEX's Flash Decompiler, and the Bethesda Archive Extractor. You'll also need the Fallout 4 Creation Kit in Fallout 4, but, you know, I was assuming. For all the other methods I'll be showing you, you'll need Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Regardless of which method you're going to be using, you'll need a basic knowledge of animation and the modding directories in the Creation Kit. But without further ado, let's hop right in the tutorial. So first and foremost, you're going to want to have your Fallout 4 data open, along with a Bethesda Archive Extractor window open. Just copy the file path from your Fallout 4 data and open it in your extractor. You're going to want to look for the BA2 file listed as interface, and this is basically a zipped folder full of all the animated icons and the user interface elements inside of it. Once you find it and have it selected, you're going to want to look for an icon that uses your starting template. Just click the drop down menu and you'll see these four options. You're going to want to click on interface and then components. From here, you'll see the five different categories that the developers divided the icons into, but for tutorial purposes, we're going to want to click on vault boys, perks, and then we're going to want to use the well rested animation. Just uncheck everything you don't want exported and then make sure that well rested is checked. From here, we're going to want to extract the well-rested file into a place of your choosing, and then we can move on from here. Take a note, however, that every icon here, the file type is an SWF, and this stands for Shockwave Flash. It's the only type of animation file that Fallout 4 is going to accept. Now that you have your starting point for your icon, you're going to want to decompile the icon you extracted. So we can open it up and animate. We'll start by opening up the flash decompiler I mentioned earlier, and open up the well-rested file we extracted. Since I extracted everything prior to the tutorial, I'll just find it in the folder I put in. From here, now that we've opened up the file, you can see the actual animation in the preview window. You can also see the Shapes tab, and every individual shape used in the icon's animation is shown here. In the Frames window, you can see how many frames are in the animation in each frame itself. The other tab is pretty useless, so just ignore that. What we're going to want to do is hit this button up top that says Export to FLA. So, exporting it to a Flash file lets us open it up itself in Adobe Animate and play around with the frames and shapes. It's it's pretty simple. So from here, I'm just going to export the flash file into a folder of my choosing. Now that we're in Animate, we're going to want to go to File, Open, and find where we exported our flash file. Once that opens up, you can see the animation and all of its frames laid out for us to see. From here, for our tutorial, we're just going to clear all the frames and keep a blank canvas as a starting point for the actual animation portion of the tutorial. Now, when it comes to the actual animation portion of this process, you, you do have some freedom in terms of how you want to go about it. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you'll need a somewhat basic knowledge of how Animate works, so I won't delve too deep into what everything is, but I'll try and explain everything to the best of my ability here. That being said, our first method of animation here involves most of the traditional techniques and tools that animators use in Adobe Animate. These tools are the brush tool, the bucket tool, the pen tool, the eraser, and the motion and shape tools. Oh, also the shape tools. 
These are basically your bread and butter in animation, and if you're a hardcore animator like my friend Pax, you probably prefer to draw each of your animation frames by hand with the brush tool, which is some level of crazy I can't get on, but hey, those types of animations typically look the most visually pleasing. But yeah, the brush tool usually works the best for those of you who like to do these things by hand, and it works like any old brush tool you're used to working with. Just click and drag till you get the shape you like. Animate usually does some sort of shape correction to make your shapes look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing or neat, so that's that. Building off of that, that's a good segue into the bucket tool, which is literally exactly what it sounds like, filling up your drawn shapes. The bucket tool is something that you just pair up with the brush tool or the pen tool when animating. Just use it to fill up any space you want with white. That brings me to my next point here, and this is something I can't stress enough. This goes for any icon you make, regardless of the method that you use. Every single element in your animation has to be a filled shape. The way that Bethesda set up these icons to work in-game involves the white shapes on gray space. For example, in our well-rested icon, take note how when I click on any part of the Vault Boy here, the entire piece I've clicked on is highlighted in a sort of dotted grid fashion. This just indicates that what I clicked on, you know, the, these are just shapes. And for every icon you make, you're going to want to work with animating like using just those shapes. The game will do the work for you and weed out the gray background while changing the color of the white to match the player's HUD color. The best way I can describe this is positive and negative space in drawing. For example, in our well-rested icon, let's refer to the gray as the negative space, and in our case, the white will be the positive. Notice how the gray space sort of draws the lines for us, but note that we're not drawing with gray, we're just letting the background do that for us. Simply said, just draw with the white. The only parts you're going to be drawing are the white parts. Now, I know that was a little bit of a lengthy explanation, but that's something I can't stress enough when animating these icons. It's just a really specific process in order to get it correctly in-game. That being said, our next tool to cover is the eraser tool. Now, in our case here, the eraser tool can be used to er erase any white parts we draw out here. In a way, this is like drawing with the background since you're making it shine through. Remember, if you want to draw a line through a shape, use the eraser tool. Never ever change the brush tool to gray and brush over it. The game will detect that you, you change the brush's color and you're just brushing it over with gray to cover it up, and it'll show through once it's up on your heads up display. Our next tool is the pen tool. This is my preferred method of drawing final things. I usually draw a rough outline on separate layers, then just go over it with the pen tool and fill up with the bucket tool. I personally like the pen tool since it can draw shapes just about as sharp as you want and I'm more precise with it. The next tool we'll be covering are motion and shape tweens. Now, I don't know the best way to describe these to new animators, but I'm sure you can Google how to use motion and shape tweens. The good news is that motion and shape tweens still translate into Fallout 4's animations, so use them to your heart's content. The final tool in your traditional arsenal are the shape tools. The square, circle, and polystar shape tools offer a quick solution for you to draw shapes. It's relatively straightforward and you can look at it as a way to draw instantly filled shapes. Now, with all these tools being covered, you can animate any sort of icon you wish, but there are certain rules that you need to follow to make your icon blend seamlessly into the game. It's important that you avoid any sort of colored or black outline when doing your icons, since that may mess with how it's displayed in-game. Try your best to keep the layers under three layers. This is something that will really irritate a lot of animators, since the layers function is so useful, but I find that any animation with more than three layers causes the animation's individual parts to fade out at different intervals in-game, and it's to, it just reveals you know, anything that you may not want to show to people. A helpful tip for you is to animate on as many layers as you want, but in the end condense it down to one or two layers. And you can do that by Control c Control shift v you know, just flattening the layers by like, like that. The next big rule that you need to follow is to never ever just use straight PNG or JPEG images right in Animate. Even if you go into Photoshop and render parts of the image transparent, Fallout 4 will read the image's dimensions and project it as a square. This, of course, is a huge no-no, un unless that's what you're going for. 
Now, there's an exception to this rule, but it in its own is really complicated, and it just becomes a new method of animation altogether that I'll cover in just a second. For now, let's take a look at what we've animated in-game and see how everything looks. So, I mentioned earlier that there's an exception to using images within Animate for your icons. In order to avoid having your icons misread by the game as boxes, there is a few specific steps you need to follow in order to get away with using images. Like I mentioned earlier, you need to use shapes, and shapes only when animating for your icons, but luckily there's a trick that you can utilize to use your images when animating. Now, if you're like me, and your preferred form of animation is within images, or creating still frames in a cycle, this method is going to benefit you the most. I work a lot in Photoshop, and luckily most of the Adobe programs are closely linked together in terms of functionality and file types. Here in Photoshop, I have a few still frames for the barter animation that I made. You can see that these are virtually screenshots from Animate, but the gray background is still present within the image. Remember, if I plug this into my icon and put it in game, the game wouldn't remove the background since it's an image and instead it'll render it as white. To get past this, you're going to want to follow the next few steps that I mention. First and foremost, make sure you have all of your frames open and ready to prep for the next step. Next, you're going to want to go into your still frames and invert the colors of the image. You can do this by going to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. You'll notice that the image's colors are inverted and the Vault Boy is black, but just to make sure we're working strictly with black and white, I'm going to crank the brightness and contrast all the way up just to ensure we're working with black and white. You're going to want to do this with each of your still frames until you're done with the animation cycle. Now that you've done all of your work in Photoshop, you're going to want to boot up Adobe Illustrator. The first thing that you're going to want to do is create a new document. It doesn't matter what size, just as long as it's big enough for you to work with. I'm just going to use this size here to work with. For our next step, we're going to want to prep our images we use to go into Animate to eventually use as an icon. We're going to want to go to File, Place, and find where we saved our images that we inverted in Photoshop earlier. I'm just going to select all three and place them anywhere on the canvas. From here, I'm just going to resize one of these to fit on the blank space, just to where it's large enough for me to work with, and then I'm going to click on my Image Trace button over here. If you don't have this button, just go up to Window and then Image Trace and it should open up for you. Now from here, you're going to want to hit the Advanced button and make sure that Ignore White is checked. You're going to want to hit preview after that and then wait for the image to trace. The first thing you're going to notice is that the white disappeared and the selection remains a square shape. From here, you're going to want to click expand in the upper portion of the screen and then you'll notice your selection change to the outlines of the vault boy. From here, you're going to want to click on any part of the black portion left from the image trace and all the other parts should get selected as well since they're grouped. You're going to want to change the color to white. And you'll notice you can't see it anymore, but the selection still remains. Now, while you have that selected, you're going to want to hit File, Export, and then Export As, and then you're going to want to export it as an SVG file. This is the exception of a graphics file that Animate will take, but it will only accept SVG files exported from Illustrator. Save it under whatever name you want, and then rinse and repeat for your other frames. Just make sure that you delete the still frame from your previous export before starting an image trace on the next frame. Once you're finished, just import your animations and then scale it however you want. From here on out, these are the types of graphic files that you can use within Animate when making your Fallout 4 icons. Now, with both of those methods, you can combine aspects of either method I showed you to suit how you animate. For example, let's say you used method number two. All the rules and tips shown from method number one still transfer over for method two, so you can still use shape tweens and, and the tools to your heart's content. Now, before I get on to the implementation portion of the tutorial, let's review things to look out for when animating your icons. 
Do not use colored or black outlines when animating your icon. Do not use PNG or JPEG type images straight into animate. Try to keep it boiled down to one or two layers in the end. Make sure that you use the proper document size. Easy way to avoid this is by extracting an icon to use as the template directly from the game. Once your icon is done and animated the way you want it, the first thing that you're going to want to do is publish it, you know, so it becomes a shockwave flash file usable by the game. You're going to you want to go to File, and then you're going to want to go to Publish Settings. You're going to want to make sure that the output is a place that you want to save it, and then you're going to want to make sure that SWF is checked. And then from there, you're going to want to hit Publish, and then you should be good to go. Alrighty, so here I have my creation kit open with my ESM and a plugin file I usually use for my animation tests. So I've taken the liberty of creating an icon demonstrating what it looks like if you didn't follow my steps and I used colored outlines or whatever. But if it were a properly made icon, it works just the same to implement it. I figured while I'm putting it in game, I should take the liberty to record the steps I take when I implement an icon so you can do the same with your properly made icon. So. First things first, when you're in your creation kit, you want to make sure that your icon you made is inside of your Fallout Data folder. To do this, just open up your Fallout Data again, just like from the beginning, and then open the Interface folder. From there, go to Components, then Vault Boys, and then Perks. From there, I have a set of icons I've tested, and I'm going to copy and paste my icon into this folder. I should mention, if you don't have any of these folders inside your Interface folder, make them. So, with your icon now in your Fallout 4 data, the first thing you're going to want to do in the creation kit is open up the character menu on the side. From there, go to quest, and then in the search bar, type min00. This is the first quest that Preston gives you in Concord, and it's usually what I test my icons on. You don't necessarily have to choose this quest, but I find it the most convenient for me. Double click min00, and inside here you're going to see all the quest info. Near the top, you'll see the neatly placed shockwave flash file input, and from there you're going to want to find where you copy and pasted the icon you made inside your Fallout 4 data. Once you've found it, select it, and then save your changes in the quest window. From there, back out, and then your icon should be implemented in-game.